as Silver Star Hotel, as the precinct of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature, in terms of Rule 56 of the Standing Rules of the Gauteng Legislature, read together with Section 1 and 2, and Section 28 of the Powers, Privileges, and Immunities of Parliament and Provincial Legislatures, Act Number 4 of 2004. I would therefore request that we all stand and uh, we sing uh, the national anthem. Can we please all rise? You may be seated. Um, let me take this opportunity to greet all of you, greet all the apostles who are here, all the pastors, as well as the bishops that have joined us today, and all our stakeholders that are present here today. Welcome members of the portfolio committee who are here. Welcome the speaker. Uh, of Mohali City, Councillor Jacqueline Panel, as well as the Chief Whip of uh, Mohali City, Councillor Miriam Mohoje in absentia. I hope that she will be able to join us uh, as we proceed. Also welcome uh, the officials from the Gauteng Provincial Legislature and the officials that supports the Committee of uh, Social Development and everyone else coming from all areas of our province. I'd like to greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, without any further waste of time, because we are here in Mohali City and we have invited the Speaker of the Council who is a resident here, to actually do the welcoming remarks so that all of us can all feel at home. Uh, so I will now hand over to the speaker to do the welcoming. Honorable speaker, um, maybe before you do that, um, there are gadgets that will be distributed if there is a need for you. These are gadgets that uh, will assist us with the various channels, the language channels. And if you happen to use the gadget, uh, the English channel is on channel number one. So if you press one there and you put your earphones, you should be listening in English in case we speak in Sesotho or any other official language. Africans will be on channel number two. Sisutu Sipedi will be on channel number four. 
Sizulu and Isikosa will be on channel number three, and Chivenda and Chisonga will be on channel number five. So those are the channels, uh, honorable members and colleagues. And there will also be sign language for those that uh, cannot hear. So um, I will then uh, request that uh, when you are done with the gadgets after the session, please hand over the gadgets back to the officials because we always reuse those gadgets. So thank you very much for your attention. And I will now call on the speaker of the Council of Mahali City to welcome all of us. Over to you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All pro protocol observed. On behalf of the Executive Mayor, the Chief Co uh, Whip of Council, the MMCs, the councillors, and the residents of Mukhari City, I welcome you all to the cradle of human origin. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honoured to be here amongst you, the people who pray for us every day. Thank you very much that you haven't lost your faith. In this month of August, which is Women's Month, we started very badly in Mukhari. We had the atrocity of eight women being raped. Our gender violence is very, very bad in Mukhali at the moment. We have all these atrocities happening. We have fortunately managed to have 250 people arrested, causing all the havoc. But we need your prayers. We need you to pray for our country. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Africa. Africa needs blessings and prayers. We are a big continent. We have millions of people that are starving. The so social displacement of our people is huge. It's enormous. And we really need intervention in that. I appeal to you to be safe, to protect others, the atrocities that you need to deal with every day. I always think, how do you deal with it? If you are not a person of faith, I don't know how you can cope with life. So I would like to welcome you to Mohali City. Thank you that you keep us in your prayers. Thank you that you, the work you do out in our communities, because we need to do social upliftment across all sectors, genders, and our youth need to be taught how to respect and to be dignified young people. We need to train our children from an early age to honour and respect and to take care of their parents and to take care of themselves. So my prayer today is that you are all kept safe and that you are blessed and that you may carry on praying for us. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much, Honorable the Speaker of Council. Uh, we really appreciate the warm words of welcome. And let me tender an apology for the speaker. She requested that after she has done her welcoming remarks, she would like to leave because she's got another engagement. So as soon as you are ready, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, if you are free to leave any time during the session, you are free to do so. And thank you once again for gracing the occasion and welcoming us. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, colleagues, pastors, apostles, as you all know, um, we are a committee of the legislature here today hosting this uh, roundtable discussion. And we are a committee established in terms of section 114, subsection, uh, section 2, subsection B of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1996. And our role 
as the committee is to oversee the Department of Social Development. And having said that, the key functions of the committee are, amongst others, you know, lawmaking, considering and recommending the legislative proposals, interrogating the budgets of the department, as well as the proposals for the budgets, and also recommend a, on how they should appropriate their budgets. We also do public participation, whereby we ensure that uh, there is public involvement and public engagement, especially on pertinent matters such as gender-based violence, which is engulfing our society, which is a very sad development during this uh, Women's Month. And it's very funny that every time, every year during Women's Month, the issue of GBV is exaggerated. It becomes more prominent during this month of August. I don't know why it is the case, but for some awkward reason, it happens to be exaggerated during the month of August. And as we come to a close of this Women's Month, I really wish to appreciate all your involvement and wish to express my gratitude to all of you and my empathy and my sympathy goes to all the victims of gender-based violence. We have seen in 2020, I think it was in November 2020, when the president hosted a summit on GBV where most of the women shared their horrific experiences and I'm sure all of us were witnesses to that as we watched gruesome scenes displayed on national TV where women was, were expressing their on, and sharing their experiences of gender-based violence. It was a summit that was held and there were resolutions that were put forward to the president. And I think there was a commitment from the office of the president that there would be a follow-up summit with some feedback as to how far the resolutions have been taken through. So I think the summit is scheduled to take place in a not a very short, a long while. I don't know when exactly it is, but it is going to take place. And I think as a portfolio committee, we should pay special attention to that summit so that we can hear as to the way forward in terms of the office of the president. And we should be able to also collaborate with the National Portfolio Committee on Social Development so that together with them we can pursue on this matter and follow up and make sure that there is oversight over those uh, recommendations and ensure that some of those proposals are carried through. And let me perhaps zoom into why we are here today. The faith-based sector as you know, is one of our key stakeholders as social development. And it plays a very important role in society. And I'm not going to get into the details on that because today we do have speakers in the program. And this is your meeting. This is your engagement. So we are going to give you sufficient time to ventilate on the matters at hand so that we come up with also a sustainable or progressive resolutions. Because as communities, it's very important that we engage. Not only should we march and pray, but we must combine all these efforts. As we pray, as we march to police stations, we must also be able to sit around the table and engage on the issues that affect society so that we come up with, with resolutions and solutions to assist the government to help us. Because this is a government for the people, by the people. So our active involvement is very, very, very crucial. And that's why we called you here today to have this roundtable discussion as people of uh, interfaith. South Africa is currently battling with the scourge of increased incidences of gender-based violence targeted 
towards women and children throughout the country, as you are all aware. And the perpetrators of this violence, by large, are men either living along with the same, uh, in the same households or in the community or even share public spaces with these victims, as it was the case with the tragedy that we experienced um, recently in the country as a whole. And I think the statistics of uh, the South African police have got figures to indicate how many people were affected by GBV, how many women died in the hands of the men that they know. And we've all seen stories on social media, on national television, and it does not really paint a good picture for South Africans. And the heightened incidences of violence against women by men cast aspersions to South Africa's moral fabric and begin to raise questions on the type of values espoused and advocated in our communities. And it exposes the fault lines as to what is it that we are doing as society? What is wrong with us as society? What is it that we are not doing? What is our intervention as parents, as leaders of society? What do we do? Do we have solutions? Or are we going to put our hands in the air and just give up and leave things to, to, to go astray when we do have the mental capacity to, to come up with solutions and resolutions? And as a committee, we felt that working in collaboration with a multi-plural of faith-based organization representing different beliefs, we will foster the participation of different faith groups to come together and come up with ways of regenerating moral values in our province. Our view as this multi-party committee of the legislature is that the solutions to our problems can be found if we work together and make sure that we eliminate these tendencies amongst our communities that uh, seek to derail the democracy that our forebearers fight, fought so hard for. And ensure that we eliminate all these wrongdoings to the vulnerable uh, communities, mostly uh, women and children. And like I said, I will leave this at that and allow for the inputs by the various speakers who are scheduled in the program to really ventilate uh, on the matters. And having said that, I will then, I'm not sure if uh, Councillor Miram is here. Can I just get an indication? If she's not here, we will proceed. And I will hand over to uh, the Honorable Apostle Hobbs, seated next to me here, to take to the podium and address the House on pertinent matters that affect us. And I'm sure Pastor Hobbs will also touch on the role of churches in our communities. So over to you, uh, Pastor. Apostle Hobbs. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And um, our program director, who actually happens to be um, the convener of today, of this history-making event, especially in our community, in our locality, Mohale City, which has been plagued by a monster called gender-based violence. Um, I just want to thank you and greet you, honorable member of, um, and, and chairperson, of course, um, honorable Rifilo Kekana, chairperson of Portfolio Committee on Social Development, um, to greet the speaker of, of Mohale City, Councillor Jacqueline Panal, 
In absentia, I want to greet the ANC Chief Whip, Councillor Miriam Mohoji, the head of Department of Social Development, um, who is also still on the way, <coughs> Ms. Tembeni Mshongo, Honorable members of the Houghton Provincial Legislature Interfaith Sector Parliament, I wish to greet and welcome you. And the House at large, especially our guests of honor, women that are present in this house, women that we are celebrating, women that we are, uh, uh, um, we are here because of you because this is your month, the month of August, where we remember what our forerunners did those years. And I believe that as faith women, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. A very crucial point on our program was left out which is an opening with a prayer. But I believe that God knows that we are all here. It is by, the, by his grace that we are all here. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm actually tasked to speak on the role of the church in our communities. Um, believe in that. Um, but these days, the church is toothless. These days, the church is numb. These days, the church is paralyzed. The church is, not, is no longer doing what it's supposed to do. The church is not doing what the word of God in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, that says that, The church shall be upon his shoulders, meaning that upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ. The church is carrying Jesus Christ inside of it. The church is the ambassador of Christ on this earth. So I believe that the church should be carrying the government. But today it is vice versa. We forgot who we are as the church. We forgot our role, our crucial role. We need to direct our government. We need to direct our communities. Things are out of order today because the church is silent. Church, where is your voice? Arise, church, and especially women. Where are women that are skilled to wail? Are we making noise enough? Or are we at the back? Are we relegated to those places in the tents where the, the, the daughters of Zef, where the daughters of Zelopehat were relegated to keep quiet? Those daughters, you know, are like the, 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 the women of 1956, who came out whilst they were relegated to those dark places where they were expected to be silent. So I'm saying to us, let us come out, out of those tents. Let us go out. The baton was here, was left. The 1956 leaders, there were women with Christ inside of them. We are proclaiming Christ, but we are not doing accordingly. Let us take the beaten. Let us take our rightful place. Let's go out like the Zelophehad women. Go out of that place. Go to that place where Lakutwa Akungeni Kona. Go out to those men that were so fearfully 
fear, fearful of those high range men. Our government, our leaders in the government, they, are, they don't know what to do because we are at the back. They are being led by falsehood, false men and women when the church is silent. Let us go up there fearlessly and be the, the catalysts and be the, 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 the change makers. Let us go there patriotically and claim South Africa out of the hands of the evil one. We are expected to be gate keepers. We are expected to be watch men and women, but we are not doing that. <coughs> the role of the church, and when we talk about the role of the church, we're not just talking about women and men, allow me to, 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 to put the women at the front because this is their special time. This is the special time I will always say of which we know that we cannot do that. But this time I'm, I believe I'm allowed to say women at the forefront. Let us be at the forefront. Amen. Amen. Let us be socially significant. Let us be evangelically potent. Let us be spiritually vibrant. What we call lighty lighty. We are the light of the world. We are not lights to one another. The darkness, the communities are crying out there. Let us go out there and be real souls of the earth. Our country is in tatters. Our country needs us. Can I keep preparing one about it looks like? I'm not referring to that. I'm touched by what, what I see in a country. I'm seeing what was a change to us, especially black women, especially women that could not do one, two, three. They were not allowed because of the laws of the past. Then 1994 came forth to allow us to, that Ramu put, have it, have it lens at prosperity. But here it is. It's gradually slipping out of our hands. What are we saying, Christian women? Let us be prophetically relevant. Let us not prophesy about your address and my address. Let us be potential, I mean relevant in our prophetic ways. Let us prophesy. Um, I've seen so many prophets, prophets coming from the darkness, prophesying about our country. I've never seen a professional, a relevant prophet of God standing there on national media saying, this is what God is saying. We are pulled back to say, where are you going? Sometimes as women, we do that on our own. Pull her down syndrome. Some saying to all of us, let us help one another. Beloved of God, let me clarify the concept church. The church is not just the building. The church is you and I. The church is the community where we come from. And that community 
It's not just uh, the Nyaupe guys, Kaparuna di congregancy. It's everybody that comes from the communities. And when I'm saying that, I'm talking about even the leadership of this country, the leadership that we elected, the apparent parcel of us as a community. Are we making a difference there? Are we guiding them as we are supposed to? Hallelujah. So the church is you and me who believe in Christ our Lord and Savior. The question is, what is our role in our communities? Hallelujah. As I indicated, we need to be socially significant. Arebona haleng in our communities. We cannot just feed our people. Linsula mudimu fela, mutu atsori ketlala. Mutu ali depressed. We need to make an impact in the lives of our people, in the lives of our people, who, our congregants, and the communities at large. Hallelujah. I believe that as a church, we have a pivotal role to play in, in, in fighting and eradicating the scourge of gender-based violence we see the results, which is gender-based violence. Are we, as women and men of the cloth, are we doing what we are supposed to do? We're supposed to be doctors because Christ lives in, inside of us. He is the Jehovah Raphael, the greatest physician amongst them all. So in other words, he, he does what? He diagnoses. He's able to see, Hori, this person has got a problem. He's able to, 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 to prescribe and say you can get one, two, three that will help you. Are we inquiring of the Lord now? Are we connected to the utmost God that we can touch his people in the communities. We need to play a very pivotal role, a role that will, at the end of the day, eradicate what is happening. We are not going to, 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 to actually put our hands, on the, our hands on the head and say we are defeated. The Bible says the righteous shall take it by force. This Earth is suffering violence. So if we cannot put on the armor of God and be those soldiers and go out there and stand against the schemes of the evil one, who shall do it? Who is that woman and man who will come out and say, send me, Lord, who shall say, I will be at the forefront? I'll be the, like the 1956 women. Luna, you are very privileged to be knowing God intimately. Those women, the 1956 women, they had God, but I don't think they had the privileges that you have now. You are very armed. Go out there, emancipate. South Africa, out of the clutches of the evil one. Emancipate our communities. In the Bible, all violence is considered an, an offense against God and against humanity. By the, the, the scripture is full of condemnation of violence. Time and again, violence is associated with wickedness. And it is condemned as a detestable, you know, way in the eyes of the Lord. Having heard all what the word of God says, I want us to look at South Africa. What South Africa is experiencing pre presently. I hope I'm on time. 
statistics in South Africa that were released in February 2022, this very year. It says that crime against women in South Africa is one in five women, 21% of women have experienced physical violence at the hands of men who are wicked, at the hands of men who are still in the darkness. What are we saying, Bom? Maybe because these very men, but it's secure no more for saying. Did we rear them accordingly? Did we, you know, nurture them to be real men? What are we saying? We conceived them for nine months. We should be knowing what needs to be done. I believe that gender-based violence can be eradicated and it can be done so by addressing the causative factors. We're busy looking at the after effects of what could have been, of why gender-based violence has escalated so much. We have seen that when COVID-19 came in, it rose higher and higher. What did we say is because the church was not considered as an essential service. By who? By the government. When the Bible says what? The government shall be upon his shoulders. The church of God. Hallelujah. You did not, you felt the people of God. You did not claim your rightful place. You just kept quiet. You didn't say anything. And above me, you should have stood up. But uh, 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 you were paralyzed. There are so much family disorders, which causes gender-based violence. By now, we all know that when there are family disorders, children we rear children that are dysfunctional. Children are monkey see, monkey do. They copy what is happening in our homes, take it out in the streets, and do what we call peer, peer group pressure, influence others. Let us have children that go out and influence. Let us raise catalytic children, positively so. What are our Sunday schools doing? What are our children's churches doing? What are we doing inside those homes? Children are coping wrong things. If Papa u bully a me. If Papa u u u humiliate a me, the child is looking. The son is looking, and wants to emulate Daddy. And what happens? We have gender-based violence. We have angry. We raise angry young boys, unaware. Because really, take a girl child to work. What about take a boy child to work? When are we going to do that? That is your role as a church in the community. Let, let us go and change the mindset of our communities, the mindset of our people. Hallelujah. We are breeding psychopaths in our society who end up being serial killers, serial rapists. Let us check ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. Let us evaluate where does this thing come from? 
How can we cap this? We've got so many other problems or social ills that are affecting us negatively. But there are others that are homemade, such as gender-based violence. We have harm, harmful gender no, norms that we have valued, we have put into, we have, we have put it on upon ourselves. The question is, who are you wearing? Are you wearing Jesus well? There are gender stereotypes who sometimes attempt to justify violence against women because of how you dress. Not necessarily revealing clothes or what, because it is your duty, me. how to wear. It is us. And uh, sometimes we feel and it's not about Horua Bere revealing clothes. It's about Horua Itata, this pretty young girl. Now the boys think that, I get it, there are gender stereotypes. Barua Parezibona, Kabezibona, to be seen. Let us change the mindset of our boys. Horua Parela Wena. This pretty girl, wa aparezi yena, wa aparezi mudimu akare. Hallelujah. Baina, this all this leads to human, women abuse. The silly remarks by these silly young men, or even older men. Hmm. And this whole thing has actually crept into the body of Christ, into, inside the church of God. Let us take out this cancer out of our church because we have the ability. God has given us the armaments. Hallelujah. By now we know women, women like Bolidia, the woman of purple who dealt in purple clothes. Hallelujah. We know the Shunammite women, very rich women, who, who did it on their own, who did it with the help of even men of integrity. But today we see men who want favors for women to be elevated. Let us stop that. We saw the Zelopiat uh, uh, girls, the five girls. Those girls did it on their own. They said we are going to get out of the tents where we are relegated to women. But we are going to go out. We are going to, to, to confront the situation but these women were virtuous. These women were dignified. The church of God cannot be seen to be rioting, to be marching and fighting. The church of God needs to be bold. The church of God needs to do things boldly with dignity, being virtuous women of God. They went there and stated their facts. They knew their history. South African women know their history. You know where you come from. You know where you were relegated to. They knew the history. They knew the law, that this law has got, you know, discriminatory terms inside. The mosaic law, Moses could not believe it. Those priests could not believe it. But I'm saying that these women came out and say, we know who we are. They produced their knowledge. 
They produced the wisdom that they acquired from the Lord that they prayed in their closets. The God that you pray in your closet, take him out to your communities. That's your role. That's your duty, woman of God. They came out there very armed. There were women that, that, that were armored that, you know, God wants skilled women be armed with knowledge. But knowledge is power. Be knowledgeable. Know who you are. Know the history, where you come from. Teach your children. It is your duty. In your closet there, in your own home, it's, it's, it's actually an obligation of every woman to teach his or her children inside that home. Teach your children so that they don't go out of the way. Teach your daughters. But older women teach daughters, their daughters. Teach younger ones. Let us do that. These women were armed. You are also armed. You know the word of God. Hariba Bali. We are not playing church here. Know the word of God. Know that you are not saving a lot of, of a God of chaos. There are rules, there are ways that we need to follow. Let us do that. Let us take that, woman of God, this morning. Let us go out and make a difference in our communities. We are South Africans. Those foreigners, those illegal foreigners, said he jang, said he can send cancer in our communities. We can get rid of them. We can talk into their minds and they shall flee from our country if you all stand up. Hallelujah. By now we know that one of the causative factors that causes this gender-based violence is hunger. Relabile. To an extent, I told you about the women, the, 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 the Proverbs 21 women, Bolidia, but the Shunammite women, women who could acquire wealth. To an extent, there have been wrong things that the government officials, that the government representatives, that the government leaders, based on a brown envelope, plate Hmm? So I'm saying this hunger, we need to look at it. Are we connected to the great I am, the Jehovah Jireh, our provider? Are we calling on him, a miracle working God, a God who can pour down uh, 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 blessings that will overtake us? that we will not be able to contain. Are we connected to him now? Let us be connected to him and make a difference in our communities. Food scarcity. There is an increase in gender-based violence because Roy Pandel. Roy Pandel living in wrong places instability in our country. It's one of the causes of gender-based violence. There is so much instability to an extent that the enemy, why Genela Fela, 
illegal foreigners who are not supposed to be here back and because there is instability in our country. Who is responsible to ensure that stability? We need to come out and be catalysts in our communities. Are changing what is happening in our country? There is so much invasion of foreigners. Ibile, barona. Sometimes even inside our very homes, they are paralyzed. Why batu? Why kahana batu? The zamazamas, hone ano in our doorstep, in Mohale City. Bagena, baripa bana anyhow. They render our young boys because banabaruna have skills, banabaruna have rupel. Ba 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 put like other boys. Ba ba shubule ba be kali. I'm saying enough is enough, bomme. Let us take our rightful place. They feel that they are untraceable. Because their DNA is their fingerprints cannot be traced. But we need to do that. You know, we used to do evangelistic uh, course in the in right inside Hillbro, right inside Beria, in the middle of the night. When we're doing that, Hurricane Mo. I remember at some stage, when we get there, these young men, foreigners, illegal foreigners, bale armed. And and this woman said, with your arm, come, come, come. Jesus wants you. You know what happened with that gun? He turned around and turned and ran away. This is what brave women do. When you know that you are armored, they will run away from you. We need to be brave women. You call them. They will run away and never come back. But we are toothless. We cannot stand against the devil's schemes. Hallelujah. We are called to be watchmen and women for our communities, our cities. Are we patriotic enough? Are we watching around? Are we going around? Watching around our cities? We know that we are, we are armed. We've got the armor of God upon us. Every morning you need to put on the armor of God. Put on your helmets of salvation. Your breastplate of righteousness. You get yourself with the, with the, with the gospel of peace. With your fitted, fitted also. You put on. You take upon your, 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 your sort of the spirit. Which is the word of God. And the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, be truthful. Amen. Have the gospel of truth upon you. Amen. Know the truth. Be knowledgeable. Amen. And know that the truth shall set you free. Amen. So I'm saying we can deal with this gender violence if we are truthful. Tell the truth. Speak it the way it is. Do not be afraid to knock where you are not supposed to. Knock on those doors knowing that God has already made a way. Because Hallelujah. Women of the cloth arise and shine. That light, that light you are in the world, let it go out and shine forth. You cannot even smell the coffee. That's how depressed the communities are. 
We cannot even smell the after rain. Ukai mungholo munatole wahapula kata hona. We cannot smell it because we are so full of anxieties. We are so full of hatred. We are so full of all these negativities of this world. Now I'm saying, as women of God, let us go and be the salt. People ba luzite monatu akopila. Let us give it that saltiness, that nice taste. But ba kono pila, lisoi la pidiisa. Hmm. So long as it's not in 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 in, in, in ten, not an overdose of it. Let us put that salt. Hmm? But ba kono utwa monadi. But ba fele siki monadi. Our young girls. But some ya di 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 clinic is a di hypertension. Hmm? But some ya di clinic is a sa sa parking. Chronic illnesses. Why is that happening? Young girls. When we are here on our watch, the blood of those young girls, Baba Ripuang, Baba Swarankiri chronic medications, I mean me, chronic diseases, those girls, Baba Lingoma and some of them prematurely, their blood is crying out to God. And I cry out to God, you know what? God is telling us that the blood of your daughters, the blood of your sons, Bakashekwilin the rapist, is crying out to you to me. Where are you, woman of God? That blood is crying out to you for justice. That blood is saying, save me. Let us save our children. Let us save the male seed. Bante bali few our male seed. Baya chabalala. Bakena into the nyaupes. What is this nyaupe? Harisheba TV batla bai uzwa. Busiu. Bai lotu ba TV. Eba tumba tum. Eh arluki saying bomme. Bomme arita mendi chale matekeng. And go out there. And go and claim Banabaru na back. Those that are selling those drugs to them, call them and say, Jesus needs you. Highly legally in the country, ensure that this person is deported. Let us stand up, virtuous women of God. I urge you. I urge the government as well to consider the church as an essential service. I believe that Nalwena, we are in a new dawn. New things are coming up. This is the time to say we are salvation. The little bit that is left of our country. We go in, you know, have you seen our streets? We need to do what he calls spring cleaning, spiritual spring cleaning first, because before we can physically spring clean our country. Our country needs spiritual spring cleaning. We need to cleanse it. Hallelujah. We need to cleanse it spiritually. We do not have to be told by the government to go and clean our our our. Our, our country spiritually. Runar Sanzer at least such initiatives. Runar Runa, we need to go out. Rofepa Sichabasaruna. We are believers in Christ. We see non believers in Christ. Bafepa Sichabasaruna. We see them. They are now going internationally. They are now going globally. Nalwena, but the greater I am inside of us, 
who own silver and gold. Let us rebuild our ruined cities. Let us be like that woman who builds the cities. Hallelujah. Let us go out like Shira and build the cities. Let us take it upon ourselves. We are here as Gauteng and say that per region, each one is going to build out, to build up region Ahare. Let us go there. Harikreta, we go in nationally, Ro build every province. Hallelujah. We are going there. We are going down the trenches. We're going down the trenches. I remind him. Let us go and do it. That is our role as the church of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God richly bless you. God bless you. This is the beginning of greater things. The, today is the beginning of new things. It's a dawn, the day when new things are built. In this room, we'll say that this room is a history maker. New things have been built by women and men of cloth. Hallelujah. Women of integrity. This is the beginning. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very powerful input by our apostle. Do we all agree? Very inspirational, very powerful. A big round of applause for Honorable Pastor Hobbs. Um, Apostle Hobbs is a member of the Houghton Provincial Legislature Interfaith Sector Parliament, Amen. as you would all know. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Mama, for, for the powerful input, very inspirational and, and very emotional. And I think she made a emphasis on the fact that it starts with us, Bomme. And she said, Bomme, it starts with us to install, to instill discipline in our homes, in our communities, as well as in our congregations. I think the message is very clear, Mama. And the key questions that you referred to is, what is the role of the church in society? How do we restore the moral fiber of our society? How do we, as the church, input on the daily lives of our communities? As pastors, as apostles, as we are teachers. We are not only there to preach the word of the Lord, but to also educate and to teach. Are we doing that? So those are the key questions that she, she raised. She says, we must shine the light upon our communities. We are the light. Let's share and shine that light. The hunger, the poverty, the instability in our country, those are the issues that we need to focus on, look at how do we resolve those. Why are we cowards? Why are we sitting in the corner and not be out there and make our voices heard. That's what she's saying. Why are we complacent? Do we have to be complacent when the country is under siege? As bombe, no. Thank you very much, Mama. Uh, at this point, I'm going to allow the head of department of uh, the Department of Social Development, Mayor uh, Tembeni Mshongo. She's not here with us physically. She has joined on the uh, virtual platform. I'm going to allow her to make her input from the side of the department. And after the input, I will then 
take hands for discussions so that we can have a, a, a way forward. So, uh, uh, Honorable uh, HOD, if you are ready, please come through. I think we are ready for you. You can come through. Over to you, HOD. Sorry, HOD, we can't hear you. I can hear you very faintly from far. So let's get the audio right so that uh, the audience can also hear and see you on the podium. Can the sound people please assist? I can hear from here, but very faintly from your computer there. If you can just beam, thank you. You, you are audible, but unfortunately, uh, the rest of the audience cannot hear you. You are not beamed properly. Maybe let's give the technical team two minutes to sort out the technical issue at the back there, and they will just give us an indication if they have got it right. Technical team, please assist. Can I request that you speak to the HOD on the laptop there because I can't speak from here. I don't think she's hearing me as well. Can, they hear, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you can proceed. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon, um, Chair and uh, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, good afternoon to the pastors um, in our midst. And I also want to welcome all women uh, and greet all women that are with us today. A happy Women's Month. Um, my talk, I can see that it was said that I should focus on the relationship between the FBO sector and social development. But, Chair, I would want to highlight the fact that as Houting uh, Provincial Government, there are various roles and responsibilities that have been given to our political principles. And the FBO sector is being led by MEC and Komo Ralihuk. On receiving your invitation, I did um, engage with her. So uh, she's aware about the fact that I am addressing you together with the FBO sector. Um, the Gauteng Department of Social Development has been entrusted to serve the needs of the most vulnerable in society, uh, being older persons, persons with disabilities, women and children. Government acknowledges that uh, in its pursuit uh, to address the ever-increasing social ills, it cannot do it alone, but requires to work with um, in collaboration with all key partners. One such partner that remains steadfast um, in its pursuit of tackling poverty, inequality, unemployment, and moral degeneration is, of course, the faith-based organizations um, sector. Faith-based organizations, by their nature, are positioned to positively influence and impact change in our society. The Gauteng Provincial Government recognizes the importance of the role 
FBO's play in creating an environment that pro promotes social cohesion and, and unity. In 2015, the Gauteng Provincial Government hosted a successful inaugural faith-based organization summit. The summit reaffirms the important role of the religious sector in supporting government in tackling, among other gender-based violence, working on family preservation, complementing anti-substance abuse intervention, and jointly tackling food relief in the province. The summit promised to strengthen and forge a united front between the Gauteng Provincial Government and the Gauteng Faith-Based Organization. Honorable members, you remember that uh, in 2020, when we were faced with the COVID, which was five years after the summit, uh, we witnessed the FBO sector uh, also taking on the challenges that were brought by COVID. And during level five lockdown, it could be a distant uh, memory now, but we are all aware that the Department of Social Development was overwhelmed by the support that was extended by uh, members of the uh, FBO sector on food relief specifically. Uh, our food banks were overflowing with the food relief donations also from the FBO sector, but the, the, the business sector also came into the space to assist in that regard. And churches of different uh, denominations, our religious uh, leaders of different faiths came forward and rendered their support to families that were highly in need of assistance. The assistance, you would note that it came in different forms, uh, which would include food relief, prayer for hope, counseling, a shoulder to cry on, they were really a pillar of strength to communities. Today, as Gauteng Department of Social Development, we can attest uh, and also best describe the partnership that we have with the faith-based organization as a pillar of strength. But the partnership with the FBO sector extends beyond the Department of Social Development, um, which is also a partnership with the Gauteng Provincial Government. Hence, the Premier appointed MEC Nomantum uh, Komoraluhuku as a political uh, leader for the FBO sector. Through the leadership of the, of the MEC, government partnership with, with, with the sector should be strengthened with a joint program of action. So um, I want to emphasize that uh, it is very critical that we work together with government to ensure that um, we reach some of the objectives that we set from the onset in the joint program of action. Uh, in other words, we should be in a position working together with the faith-based organizations to address uh, all forms of social ills. We are all aware of the challenges around gender-based violence, which is um, a perennial challenge that is uh, affecting our, 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 our communities. And Gauteng as a province uh, is also uh, facing high number of uh, gender-based violence. But we also have challenges in our communities uh, around uh, challenges of su substance abuse, um, also elder abuse. Our senior citizens are usually robbed of the little uh, amount of money that they receive from government. Um, sometimes it's family members that are uh, abusing them, uh, and, but also you find that they, by their nature, they are vulnerable to uh, criminals out there. So we're saying that we need to promote moral regeneration together with uh, the faith-based organization. And I was happy, although I joined, joined a, a, a little bit late, but I could hear the previous speaker was emphasizing the need of working together 
so that we address the challenges that our communities are faced with. And we also need to address all forms of inequality in our community. We know that uh, the, the racism still rears its ugly head um, periodically uh, in, in our communities. So we really need to gather to, to deal with such things. We can deal with this through dialogue, uh, raising awareness, and also ensuring that we do some form of redress and empowerment. I must emphasize that we should not remember the faith-based organizations uh, on a Sunday or religious holidays, but there should be a golden thread that is empowering and changing the lives of people of Gauteng by inculcating and infusing the values in their daily lives. Therefore, need to really join hands together and work with the faith-based organization and um, give faith-based organization the recognition that they deserve. Um, and also ensure that even when government interventions are not readily available, we know that a uh, faith-based organization, because they are there within communities, usually they are the first line of defense to some members of, of society. So we should work together and, and bring on, aboard, on board um, all community leaders as well, uh, as well as the private sector to ensure that uh, our um, interventions are integrated or streamlined. As Gauteng Department of Social Development, our partnership with the faith-based organization is long-standing because we are aware of um, most of the faith-based organizations that have um, started non-profit organizations uh, so that services can be accessible and also be integrated, be sustainable and developmental in, in our communities. Therefore, the interventions that are being brought by faith-based organizations have already overemphasized the fact that they need to be streamlined into all of uh, social development services because it's, it's, it's really different types of interventions that we have seen um, various faith-based organizations are doing. Some are focusing on back-to-school campaigns, uh, the girl-child program, the men's program, women development and empowerment programs, uh, just to name a few. So as a Department of Social Development, we value the role and contribution of a faith-based organization in supporting the efforts of the department. I also need to hasten to uh, highlight the fact that in certain instances, uh, we would want to encourage a faith-based organization, those that currently do not have non-profit organizations or are not registered as a non-profit organization to say they should be able to do so they, because it can be a, a little bit of a challenge because some do tell us that in my area of operation we have got a high number for example a high number of uh, child headed households we've been assisting them for example as a church however um, we feel that now we are no longer um, able to, to be able to, to take more because the numbers are just growing. So um, because as a department we operate within a highly regulated uh, space, so we, we really want to encourage uh, our faith-based organization to say, once you are taking care of uh, whatever grouping, in particular children and older persons, you need to be um, recognized as such. And how can we recognize you is when you are registered as a non-profit organization, then also we, we, we come and register the programs that you are rendering. So I want to emphasize that because sometimes uh, we do get uh, letters of people saying we need to, to do that. So with these few words, um, Chair and Honorable Members and uh, my faith-based organizations, 
I want to really encourage you to say, let's work together, because um, especially with regard to addressing the issues of uh, the vulnerable groups, uh, children in particular, we always say uh, it takes a village to raise a child, and I want to believe that our faith-based organization are operating in the space of communities. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, HOD. Uh, we appreciate the input that you have made and the open door policy that you have just put across and the invitation for the uh, FBO to actually look into perhaps regis registering NPOs because as you would know, um, NPOs are an extension of government. If you open an NGO, it's like you are government. You're working, you're assisting the government to take care of the needs of the people. So what a better way to actually contribute to society because you, you have to make a difference where you stay. You have to make a difference where you live. If you assist one or two people, yes, it's good enough, but the impact is not visible. You know, it's better if you, you have an NGO or an NPO where you can have programs and you are able to assist the majority of people within your space that you are living so that there is an impact. All the issues that we, we, we want to, the, the changes that we want to bring about in society, you can bring those changes through a organized formation and you know that you get the full support of government in terms of funding and training and, and all those things. So it's something that I think uh, we will take out of this uh, uh, round table discussion, HOD, and I hope when the FBO comes knocking on your door, you will indeed open those uh, doors, guide them on the processes so that they can make the necessary impact in the communities. So thank you very much uh, for that. We, we are really humbled. Um, I'm now going to take uh, inputs, and I would like uh, the inputs to focus on the presentations that were made so that we are structured and we are not all over the place. Let's engage the presentation by Apostle Hobbs as well as the presentation made by the HOD. I'm not saying you, I'm you know, channeling you, but I would just make a request just so that we have a fruitful discussions and we can have a, you know, proper, a proper conversation on the subject of GBV, especially as relates to what has been put forward uh, in, the, in the two presentations. So I am going to now at the stage take the hands. I will start here on the left hand side. If you raise your hands, I will note you and then I'll go into the middle and the last. So uh, I will have people with roving mics. I'm sure they will be able to assist. So can I take hands? Because once I take hands, then I close. So if you don't raise your hand, and you wait for somebody to say something and you get motivated, unfortunately, it, it will be very difficult for me to come back to you. So I hope that as uh, the presentations were made, you were able to you know, make your notes and gather your thoughts to, to, to make an input. It can be one sentence, it can be one thing. You don't have to say much, so long as it's, it's an input. Because this is your meeting, this is your discussion, this is your platform. So we expect you to, to, to really uh, give inputs. So let me take hands, okay? I see one on the side, one, two, Three, just note your, your number. Ne? Okay, it's two. Okay, let me, start, let me start afresh. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the back, ten, mama in front with the pink jacket, ten, eleven, mama with the red jacket, Thank you very much. I've got 11 hands, 11 inputs. We can start. Greetings one and all in the wonderful name of Jesus. 
I am Pastor Jayshri Narayan Sami from Love and Hope Rising, and uh, it's a blessing to be here, and I salute our apostle and the whole team for giving us this opportunity. In um, retrospect and looking back at the topic of gender-based violence, I stand here today as a, by the grace of God, as a perfect example of what gender-based violence can do to a human being. I myself had endured serious violent abuse that caused me to lose my hearing. And in and through my abuse, I was able by the grace of God to develop myself, to push forward, and to raise up two young men that are qualified young men that give back. And we do prison ministry, we are teaching uh, on abuse cycles, and to contribute to today's topic of what our beloved apostle said, we got to teach, we got to change the stories at home. We got to spend more time and focus on teaching who is the true man, that he's not a tiger. We, we teach men that they are tigers and tigers don't cry. But we got to teach them that they have the power to cry because God himself put it in them. And we got to teach our men that both the muscle and the tears makes them a complete man. So I believe firmly in teaching and training. And that's why we do life coaching and we do uh, therapy support. So I, I would love to say this, that we got to teach from every level. We got to take it into the communities, into the streets, into the workplace, and we got to teach what is the true meaning of love and respect. To respect another human being across every platform, across sex, race, religion, we respect the life of a person. So in terms of gender-based violence and abuse, I'm an activist, big time, but I love the men and I tell them, I tell every single man that's in this room today and all those under the sound of my voice that you are needed, you are loved, you are important, and you got to rise up to be the true man that Christ has made you to be. Because we need fathers. We need our husbands. We need our sons. We need you. And God made both man and woman to be a part of each other, to fit. So the church cannot operate without the man and the woman in leadership. Neither can our government, our communities. We are made to fit together, to work together. So let us teach. Let us teach by example. Let us teach by actions. Because action speaks louder than words. And our actions must be consistent. In the house, I believe true leadership is not in the public. It's not in the church. True leadership begins at home. Because our stories begin at home and it ends at home. If anything happens on the street, the first thing people look, where is his home or her home? And they take us back there. So firmly I believe in teaching and training and developing to change the outcome of gender-based violence and abuse. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we get uh, to number two? one and all, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, most of all, to the honorables, as well as the apostle, thank you so much uh, for your feedback. Moreover, um, I work very closely with Jay, and um, my testimony for today is that I've come from brokenness and um, abuse, uh, drug abuse, um, you name it, it's been there. And I think, moreover, we need men 
because they are the ones that, you know, uh, God has brought into the world as a first leader to, to, to bring in the seed so that we could be able to have men on, and women on earth. So, for me, as, as, as a mentor, I would say coming from the, co from the corporate industry and all the abuse and everything that I've gone through, including the divorce and having two beautiful sons, after everything that I had gone through with a man that I felt was useless, doesn't make all men useless. So I say that I would salute men that are going beyond and saying that we will do different from what the previous men have done. So here I stand saying with Jay that our sons have done differently. They've gone out and done the IT and they've gone out and toured the world and they've gone out and shown us as mothers that they are different. So there are different men out there. So I'm saying that yes, we are looking at the foreigners and I'm going to say this very broadly. I'm going to say it very strongly that at some point in 2007, I opened up a business and the business was based on the fact that we were not, we didn't have the skills here in South Africa to actually do the workmanship in regards to boiler making and having the A-grade welding. So I had uh, had the decision to make uh, and I approached government where 300 uh, permits were given and people were brought from abroad and they were given the opportunity to work in Sassel. And Babcock was one of the companies that utilized the people and they were given the opportunity. And at that point in time, I wanted to use those people's expertise to develop our South African men to take on that leadership and say, we too can do this. But the difference was is I never had the support. I never met Jay. I was not, I was incapable by myself. But at the same time, what I'm saying is I developed, or basically I on my own, gave the potential to those foreigners to get the money, to gain all of the experience. They're now critical workers in South Africa. But what is happening? I now decided to work with Jay. We're going to start from the home, skill develop, whether it's Masita, whether it's Sita. But we need your support, guys. We need to work together. We can't do it on our own. Just understand this. If we're going to do it on our own, we're going to fall apart. Let us stand together. Let's develop. If you have an idea, let's put it together. Let's not sit alone and sit in silence and say, we can do this. We can't. But if we stand together as a family of God and we can say, you know what, come bring, let's bring your ideas. All of us are seated here today with brilliant ideas. Come take your ideas, put it to the table. And let us utilize these ideas to bring it to the community and make our men valors so they too can take the baton and run that race and be finishers of that race. Let them not sit there and take the drugs that they being. We say that outside people are bringing it in, but they just now don't know what to do because they don't have the expertise. They don't have the help. They're not guided because their parents, or whatever it is, are fallen apart. They don't know where to go. They have no outreach. Let us be the ones to help them. Come. We, I know we're coming from different areas. But if we can stand together, put some type of documents together, and let's be real mentors, not only talkers, but let us stand together and do this. Do this as a believer not only believers, but bring our brilliant ideas. I know every single one of us that's seated here. I have ideas because we're coming from the corporate industry. We're coming from the biblical industry. We're coming from different wide industries. Come, people. Put it together. Let's make it happen. Our people are dying. They don't know what to do. They're depressed. And who the best than ourselves to go out there and say, you know what, we've got this uh, skills and develop uh, uh, area. Go there to Alberton. Go there to Lanasia. Go there to that place. 
they have the, the, the ability to help you. You don't have to worry to pay for anything. Just go get the help. We'll help them. You don't have to pay for nothing. This is what we want to do. Because everywhere we now need to send somebody who's got a drug abuse problem. We have to pay like almost 15 to 20,000. We don't have that money. Community, we don't have that money. We are crying because our children are stealing from us. Some parents are being killed because of the, what their children are doing. But who is standing for the community? Come. That's all I'm saying. I'm crying within myself. I, I want to reach out, but how? I can't do it all by myself. Can we stand together? Can we applaud each other? Can we say, let's we all be mentors and stand together to make this happen? So that, that raping, that children of ours that's taking drugs, that children of ours that's stealing from us, destroying us, coming to kill us as well, we can put an end to it. Maybe we cannot put an end to it, but at least they can see there's movement. Once they see movement, there's going to be change. Amen? Maybe before oh my God, the chair, can we be mindful of uh, time? Eh? And then the next speakers, you must definitely consolidate your, your inputs to one so that you must not uh, waste uh, a lot of time. Thank you so much. Thank you for this program. To all the leaders that are in, in this room, I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Apostle, for such an input and insightful. I could hear that you are talking from the heart and a grieved heart. And even this room, it is so heavy and distressed of all women who are here. You spoke about the role of the church, of which it is mind moving, and I don't even know how to start with it. The church, it is distressed on its own. And it says that you cannot give what, it, what you don't have. The church is, is striving so much, and it's expected to perform. And how do you perform with limited resources? I've heard that our head of social development have spoken about the, f the form formation of FBO and with the communities equally to FBO working together. I know there are so many um, NPOs around here. Maybe as the lady have mentioned already that we need consolidation of all that is happening. Um, with the leaders of churches in this room, I can say everybody else in churches, they're all fighting for the pulpit while the communities are in dire crisis. We wouldn't be where we are if we could spread outside there where the need is. And if you are saying that you have accepted yourself, you love yourself enough, you would be doing the right thing. So women, whether in churches, you are fighting one another. And if the church is fighting each other, how are we going to assist the communities out there? We are sh blame shifting whether people from other countries, nobody could come in your space if you are really closing doors for such illnesses. So may we focus on what we're supposed to do as women. And may we embrace ourselves from starting from home. Charity begins at home. Embrace that girl child. Embrace that boy child. Lead that family because there isn't any church without a family that is sober-minded. You can pray 24-7, but if you do not have such the love of God that you don't know, if I say I love God but I don't love my neighbor, I'm lying to myself. So I would just request that the church should refocus and realign before you go out there. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'd like to greet all the leaders and every person who's in this place. My name is Lebuhang Ransadi. Uh, after what uh, Mayor Bishop Hobbs have said about that charity begins at home, I would like to, for us to focus on a bringing of the boy child. Because since we are addressing the, is the issue of gender violence today, 
uh, I see that most of the time we are concentrating on the girl child, but we are neglecting the boy child. So as mothers in the family, even as fathers, let us concentrate on our boys and give them a good foundation and teach them how to treat women and speak to them. Hallelujah. And also in the churches, I would appeal that in the, ch in the churches, if the men or the pastors who are male can make a point that they concentrate on the boys because they are the ones who are going to lead the families. They are the ones who are going to be the heads of the families. So everything must start with them. They, should, they, are, they are the ones who should have a good foundation. Because if a girl has got a good foundation, but a, man, a male does not have a good foundation, there's going to be conflict in the house. So if we can help each other, especially why I'm saying in the church that fathers must help us is because in our society, most of the women are single parents and we are female raising boys. And it's so difficult to understand a boy child. Sometimes you don't know what to say or what to do. And sometimes when you give your, your son to, to the uncle or whoever, even the uncle himself is broken. So if the men in the churches can help us with our boys, it would be much better. Because we are also experiencing challenges with our boys. I myself, I'm raising a boy child as a single parent, but I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. So if men in the churches can really help us, we would really appreciate it. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm Pastor Sibibe from Kutswani. A pastor Rekutwile. So sis it's in Kohor, what are we going to do? Kidu Melorka Mama Baba and Chirira Sketter Rasketter Raske. Kebono Karhuri Bulela, a hutu see the Santa Credit Solution. Kur moving forward. What are we going to do? Lebon, how are we going to do as the Lebo me? I mean we are the women of twenty twenty two. We need to make a difference. Amen. So now, if I give you shahori, I hope I'm the structure from within. I can make it up one. So I need seven sub regions. I can name. So in those sub regions, I reckon those NGOs, label me by longer they are active. From there, I reckon I know how we are in, we are in, we are in the problem in the Kukai. I get to go to region number seven, Kalinen. On a problem, I know how on a little total can at all boats. And then they in happy, could it be structure? And then how about the monitoring and evaluation? How are you going? Are we in a or are we in? Are we able to do it? Are we not going to do it? But I keep on doing it. Are we going to do it? Are we not going to do it? And then boom, Ariska, Ariska, banang loko kana ko submit. Let us submit to one another. If we remove much of it, because man man can it's about cheap person. Your leader this thing report out. Who is it? Who did it? Who Baba Lungo Jim? Let it be. So that we can do it. Are we going? Amen. Because this thing can see Rahal, and then could we say to Kukiman so I heard the blood of our daughters are crying from the grave for justice, Labon? So let us come together, boom, and look on. But Nasek is Kopela, let there be structures. And then Kopela Hape, yesterday we had a meeting. Our young boys and young girls, Kibamo CPF. So Rabla Kataba Yahur, and Nagoma Diris was not all about money. At Abema Hapash, government direct call, let's wake Aremen Robereka. Whatever the resources, so dirang as a leader, use them. Who to say your community? Labo normian. Riska emela hore. Balle batur fundaning. People are dying. Remetri defense. Let's work. Kasi restore. If restore the PMB, the sir, the chemist, the abetora, the letter, the letter. Help Balle ribisa bar Regina kungutswan. Ribisa Kali then ribisa Atrish will come and help us. Rai mail wakam. Then from there we know hore. Jana emela ribisa ba nungo provinci. But na batla banor bar tu sabia. So we need to be capacitated. Biang. But to talk of a let's give us a little talk of a let's give an about Kona who could that see one name. So, Herrick Abu Mamuruti, Lebon that the Muruti, our leaders in the church, why the Hala or social development, Nakonga, our first sessions, our Rutaur. How do we counsel a person? Because social workers they can't do that, Kabu Bonafain. We do counsel, but you don't know who can right take it or wrong take it. Not fellow who nor wants a fellow. I hurry, but train everybody social work. Our who nor guide a fellow who capacitate so that we can counsel those CPF guys. Labon, Gary, who play one make a mola who shall not want a pillow on a stop who said before my police are at 
Next thing, let's use the resources external in Sona, so Lankar Saimets or Tatusua Hapeka said him. Thank you very much. Okay, Kalidumedi is a Kaufella Bashanka Bamutim, Katapelia Linting. I would, I, would, I would request to sit as I just want to be specific to the points I've written down. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much to everyone present in this place, speaking here. Apostle Velemina Mutani. I am the secretary of Mohali City Ministers Council, the deputy secretary there. Uh, Mohali City Ministers Council, it has forums that are reporting to it in all the Mohali City um, areas. Let me thank the department by arranging this kind of a program where the church can speak to the government. Um, I would like to say the church is a spiritual uh, entity, if I may put it that way. By that, I, I mean that we serve all the services that social development is doing we do them spiritually, all of them. I'm very thankful of the fact that today I heard the HOD saying they are recognizing the churches and she felt that the church has to be given a recognition that it, it deserves. Uh, we are registered NPOs as the churches, some, yes, they registered as SIPs, but mostly as NPOs. We offer services roughly, um, they, we differ, but when we are together as churches, you'll realize that there are churches that are offering all the services that affiliate or that submits to the programs of social development. I'm very thankful, I want to repeat again, to realize that government only realized today that it is just to take the spirit into practice. We rely on government for jobs because as the church, we only are not, we are a non-profit organization who only would rely on offerings. But because of churches that came to the country or started in the country, who made um, money as if it's a thing of the church. Then the spirit part of the church, which is healing and providing shelter and counseling, uh, it, it started to be doomed because those are the key services that the church offers. The church is like a woman. It gives caring, upliftment, and development. And those services are the services that social development is doing. I'm very thankful, HOD, to hear you saying you really would recognize the services that the church is doing. You would come and register those services under uh, uh, DSD. By that, I'm thankful because we end up as the church being registered as an NPO, having to have to register another NPO because from where I come from, I'm from Holy Life Christian Ministry. I, 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 I'm, I, I, I'm a shelter of the, the, the GBV uh, uh, victims in my area. I started, it's six months now, I started again a shelter of uh, uh, substance abuse. Now all those services had to come to a point of each and everyone having its own programs. I'm very thankful when government today is realizing that the church is doing it and they have been doing it. 
it's a matter of government now working with people that are really doing the actual job. Shalom. Thank you, Apostle, for everything that you have said in this place. You just charged our batteries. We should stand. Amen. Amen. But manje, into a tinta yami. Uguti in a prayer of my heart, I've been praying about that. Uguti sibe no government oti before atatama decisions. As let us hear to the Lord. Afune the men of the Lord of the word, afune the pastor, afune everybody who hears from the Lord. Uguti tini. Before we take the wrong decisions, si farele si zogu tunkulunkule enu tini. Umasengaba no government onlambele unkulunkul onga phone ukata matizetin. And uguza uguti si figure kule onda ole. Kufarele uguti si repent ekal. Uguti tina si ve na ma da bonkulunkulu betu. Esba favor yo esba tanda yo. But but spot clearly la bonkulunkulu ngoba abamazu unkulunkulu wekine so abafunu no gumlandela. So manje si stola songe singene pagati wa leo boat ya bantu bonge se landela kuyo yonke leo nda ole so marimasi nga msabu nkulu nkulu the God fearing people yibo abazo guazo kutipatata masigishins ngo wabezu hile ugutu nkulu nkulu funa guanza kaleni kulo msaba wake na nga bantu bake amen so manje the second thing is that we've been serving at schools and siti nkulu nkulu leza ikolwe our department of education here has a good number of fundies. Abeza yo e kolweni, basi zabantwana bi kol. But in yaz a good e inkinga e kona, ngoba besloksi kuluma lenda bale. Satolu guti ingati all the religions is of funa nazo, uguti zi zenzi sevens. So manje, each department yasulega uguti is nigeze, uguti sevens and kululega because of. So on camera relations as of no kuba mix la po benze is into as confuse abantuan. And then the third thing any tanda u kulumangayo, uguti since I believe in the word of God, is second Chronicles seven fourteen. It if my people, my people who are called by my name, if you are called by God's name, kushuti shawen shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Le prayer got a kuluma ngayo apostol. Yo le funega yo. If we do that, it I will hear from heaven. Agana nda ba no mu salapi, no mu foreigner, no mu wase South Africa, no mu gupi. Uta will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal the land because our land is sick. So we need the wisdom of God. Ngiyabong. Kialeboha Mo Tsara Marapo, Kimuru Pilichuti, FBO, Secretary West Rand, Katulo Kikomutlaking, Kinalidin Sate Kitlo Hodi Beyang Katamalo, based on two presentations. Yapiliaha, Mama Hobbs, Yabubidi, okay, like a begat Katilagi, yeah, the role of the church, they are the relationship between FBO and uh, social development. Kidumela hore re tsa khakala batsadi re berekile re rapetse mare re tlhoka go tsenya dinala ya me. Ke ba ka tsela ke mama hopes are we are the watchmen we are the gatekeepers we are the front runners. 
You know how the gatekeeper, only front runner, uh, only a watchman. You don't just watch things to happen and then you do nothing about it. Now, ke dumalana le se sengwe se bui mefale are ke ke bana le di branches e di rileng le di sub regions ko Pretoria. Le rona mo mo khalesiki le mo rent west ke west rent ka bo par. Rena le all such sub sub regions. Now, ke tlo go kopa fela gore se ke se itumeletseng ke gore relationship ya rona le social development ke gore re facilitate rona. How facilitate? O fiwa di financial muscles. O fiwa di di resources. Ke adumela gore ga se every resources e tla bante. Mare the little that we can be given or the same little that we have it will do a difference in a one person's life. Ka nya ka ke ye batsadi. Eh mo go kholaganyeng the role ya the church le the responsibility or the relationship yeah, social development. Kikore, Renaledi churches in each and every area. How can she be la pleke engule engwe in la leke reke? Are the kibere kiseng as the resource centers? Kidira sikai. Some of the centers is you. You can not a center of abuse. In kachwa kisna chele te kore a building to be a resource to my community. Mare, I have a resource next to me. Eka tu sana kore, in neka rolo ya solution e re le baneng le yona ya nong gore in ne bonolo because go builwe ka npo registrations ka le rena le tsona di dutse mo di filing go bereka rona mare ga re function a ke tsira nkutlo ra bereka mare ga re function function e bona gala ka action function e bona gala ka the results now how's na di lotse mo foto ntse nyalo o tswana le motho o a leng mo mohlake mo ka giso mo strength mare asna an effect e ka lokalo mare ene o te ntse le watchman ntse le e forefront or a front run now gore dilo tseo di be di di le mo karolong a re boneng di npo tseo di functiona e bile di le practical ke ratile e bua ka go execute the projects and the programs rekhoka such people to be in place so ha ke feleletsa ke bata gore ke dikolo rena le school ministries and then how shebela ka kotlo bana ba bantsi on a serious true note rena le rebellious children ba ba tswang the same families tse di tlokang thuso the same abusing family ngwana o utswa mo yone o ya ko skolong ha tsana ko skolong o dira the practicality ya ko gae Yanong harna le di resource center se tsona letseo both go kerekeng le go dikolong rena le the solution to the problems that we are facing right ke a tswalla ka gore eh se tsiri di identify le re ya go re ya go bereka mare eh di di tiro tsotle bere di dira eh madam chair ke gore eh re bone each and every child a bona thuso according to the area of need wana ka has na problem e ka lo ilia wana o mong ha e tlhoke gore maybe a few attention e tswana attention if you wana o nan le bothata o tswantseng a thusiwe with immediate effect wana o o betsa bana ba bang because o bona bana o bona papa a betsa mama go gae so inna easy for yene go yetsa to the next person so ba teacher le bone ba tla thusana le rona to identify such children and then one on one kind of interaction. I, I, how, how 2,000 children at the same time? You work, you work one after the other because who identify a particular problem more a particular child. So, if you have a background, you can say, ke gopola tlile gore eh o wesele o mohlakeng back in the years ne re feta ka di Thursdays re lo phaka sopo ka boroto ya no ha ke rutloetse khang ya sopo le boroto ke rutloetse khang ya programme go kerekeng go skolo ya no programme e o e tla gore problem e tla e tla solve ke program ke na gana ke a utlogana 
so gore re tlhole re ntse re re ya go di molotlase ke khale re bua ke khale re rapela ke nako ya go dira ke a leboga haleluya i greet you all in the wonderful name of our lord jesus christ my name is johannes pule I'm saved and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ in prison and baptized in men's in prison. Honorable chairperson, ntumele ke le boge modimo for this woman Jay. The last time that I saw Jay it was 2017 2018 when she came to visit us in Kugazo prison. I encountered Jesus Christ while I was in prison in 2015. I served God under the guidance of Chaplain Memang. I did school prison ministry at Krugersdorp under the guidance of social worker Madijakhe. I'm the director of Christ Mind. Chairperson, I'm doing ministry school ministry uh, every week i'm i'm invited by the social workers from social development i speak to a boy child every week you know the stories e bana ba nsherelang tsona e schools dilo tsetsa gala mo malapeng parents they don't know what their children are going through. Kema yana to thank God for this opportunity to be in the midst ya bo me who are going through a lot. Chairperson Tumele to stand before this beautiful woman on behalf of my fellow inmates in prison. We are sorry for what we have done to you. We have caused so much pain. You know, I walked in the darkness for a long time. But by God's grace, today I can make a difference in the community. We are sorry. We know that the pain that we have caused you know, Jay, you will bring women in prison wearing orange, sharing their story, how, we, how, how we they were raped. And you know, it was so painful. Thank you, Ray, for, for, for the toiletries that you brought to us. Our brothers, they have changed. And they are ready to come and face the community. Badu Melend, Kelebo Hamudimo for this opportunity. Thank you. Dumela Mbakulu, the gang. Beautiful things silver stars. But uh, things have changed. And I think I came here for a purpose. Uh, I give at the but I'm a mother who gave birth to three boys. Um, and how problems are going to be solved. gender-based violence ki bua es motho o santseneng a le mo situationing 
ke tshoro ho stage for 10 hours ka tipa ka strip wa of di aparo i don't know if this is relevant but ke kopa le mpeleng le ntine le matsogo mo metseng ka apoli wa di aparo le tse nne ke di apere because i stayed in a situation where i was asking myself gore how do i get out of this problem i wish there was a safe house ko ileng gore neng ka tshabela tem because it's a problem because and then they said because So there was no uh, 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 place At the same time, the abuse ba ile gore ka moso ba tlo nna ba khwenyana ba bomme ba ba le nteng ka fo ga re ga holo ene ha ke itse gore bana ba ka ba tlo fetoga eng ka moso ke tshabele ko khota was arrested for dilotse motho one a ha ke ya ko police station i got arrested because the men changed the story eh ke ile ka protection order because o jampile mela ya protection order Go police station. I was arrested because we really counted claim. Ki leko court ke ba explain la khurkhwe tsa khalang ke ba protection order. The magistrate said ha una there's no proof ya abuse. When I was sitting eh le motho ka thipa mo ka moreng a mpontsa the way a tlonketsang ka teng. I survived by the grace of God not because go ne go na le phatla e nneng ka tswa ka yona. But because please God show me tomorrow. And I said to God, if you shut down this mouth, who's going to talk about you? I know And uh, I went to court uh, the very same man went to court. I will explain I'm a drug addict, I'm a prostitute. I'm mentally unstable because at some point I ended up go with the thing because kine kini da support. He had a, a, a proof. Ya kuri kine kini ko le raton ko with the thing because kis tenwa I'm unable to take care of the kids. Bagu kesa lenke ba kudi sa single handedly but ntate ale ten muntu. And then go court that was used. Haka testi wa kuri kia tenwa or not. Haka testi wa kuri I'm a prostitute, but I lost custody. Yaba na by four. Ke magistrate wa foka kiso. I asked the magistrate gore. There's a, 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 a five-year-old girl child, and the magistrate said to me, "If you say this man cannot raise your daughter, it means when as a woman you cannot raise these three boys." That's how I lost the custody. I went to. Uh, children's advocacy ka 2019 uh, fortunately they granted me custody ya bana uh, the following year the following month but since 2019 up until 2022 i was given back the custody of my kids but i did not know because the man had the document that said i must be granted back uh, the custody i don't know my kids I don't know who ha ka moso ha ke bua le bana ba ka ke tlo ba khodisa ke reng ga mme o mong a ka re bana ba ka ba abusetse bana ba gagwe I cannot say that to my kids gore ke le khodisitse ka tsela e right because eh eh I was there I told you I I, I cannot teach my kids the morals because I was not there I was stripped of my rights as a mother ke strip wa ke mme wa magistrate so ke a utla gore le teng Magistrate wa ko ka khiso ko 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 court ke motho wa mme o nne ke mo kopa gore mphe the opportunity to raise my daughter she told me gore you have no right to remove the hair ya ngwana wa gago you cannot take your child to the clinic by 2 o'clock you must hand over everything khate di grants khate ya clinic hand over i wanted to kill all my four kids because I asked myself, Hore, Banabao Kebatan Hoba Luanelaban, are they from my own stomach or uh, did I borrow these kids? And Meoko Koto Omung Argona, wait, they will, uh, um, 
batla gola batla unfortunately they are starting to trust me because and I, they, my kids told me gore uh, we have never seen mama le papa bali together so because mudimu o tenye gradually bana ba fola and i got custody of my kids i cannot go and file for divorce I'm falling between the two systems. If I go and file for divorce, I'm going to meet the very same magistrate, Moka Hiso. If I don't file for divorce, I'm going to sit in a shack where I'm sitting, but and I was told, Hori, I've got 50, uh, 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 king, 50, 50, so my kids are homeless. As I'm speaking, Banabaka, Bakubiwa each and every day because Bantito system in they are over 18 years. So they must go somewhere else. By Lotuba, somewhere else because Habasa Tole Bale 18. I will spend the whole day talking. So I wanted my point, Kihore. Huna Libu Bodu, Bobo Lintenko Court. Huna Libu Bodu, Bobo Lintenko the police station. Huna Libu Bodu, as we speak, Huna Le Social Worker, E. Ring, Kesa Tole Kifi Wangwana. Because Nwana, and she, she knows no story. So she shall work at Ellen Tenkoskolo, Sangwana. So, eh, uh, Okay. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Nekikupa will check out how many hands are outstanding. One, four. Eh, Hona Lukopo from the kitchen. I'm not going to take more hands, Mama. I said that uh, initially, no? Hona lukopo in the kitchen. I get like it's for issues of health and safety. I get the number of the medicating. The jury has no nurse for us to tell the future medicine. So, bam put it for when can we be ready for lunch? So, because we are here, we have to go past. We have to go past shift till to half past three, so that by then we should be done. And then we are able to eat to have our lunch so that it's cover overheated. So, the uh, buoy setting, the dear the to the point, ne? so that really what we can extract out of our conversations. Uh, we would have loved to spend the whole day here. Unfortunately, I ran out the luxury of, of, of time. So, let's stick to, 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 to the drill and be on point. Progress. Thank you very much. The next speaker. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I greet you all, brethren, in the name of Jesus. My name is Matapelo Mutibe. I come from the Val. Um, I am a professional social worker. I'm a private practitioner a counselor and a therapist. But first of all, I'm a woman of God. I Amen. Point Yaka this afternoon by Hesorelebol Zatilena. This opportunity to be gathered here as Basanka Bamdimu so that we can share all these issues. Say long ring, they are troubling our communities. Um as we are on the topic of GBV, I have found out that um, as we are speaking, we must also take into consideration or rather let, we should at least consider to m have G GBV treated in the same boat with VEP. We have people who are victims of this whole thing that are, are happening as our social ills of which the victims are put in the corner, rather by circumstances or by their inability to go out and seek for help. Uh, if you can allow me just a few minutes to explain this. I've got an example as I was uh, an official that have served social development department for many years. I also had an opportunity to serve at the Correctional Service Department. I was a social worker in both departments. So there were unfortunate circumstances that I even take, uh, I even take, a, 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 take it in prayers to God or 
God, and like, where should I be? Because I was working in community. I was, I, 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 I knew all these things that were happening in the community. And, but uh, as I was in the department, I was restricted to work with something. And then I asked God, God, please release me from the dep department. Then I went back to the community. I'm a founder of an MPO called Adonai Community Development Organization right in Subukeng in the Val. So there, I serve the community at large. I'm doing all vulnerable groups. But my most important program that I realized that it needs more attention, it was that of the victims as I, I came out of prison. Please allow me to do an example of what I felt. Sorry, get oh, okay. who, who, who stop, oh, my okay. name. Please, I'm, so, I'm, I'm just going to intervene. Don't give us the background and the story. Okay. Just give us the inputs and okay. then we proceed. Thank you. Okay, let me go straight to the point. I wanted my story to make sense. So I met a woman while I was working in prison who came to me after 25 years when her when her, her daughter was raped, murdered, and stoned. I met her after 20 years of that incident. She, never, she has never seen a counselor in that 20 years. She was like a person who, was, who stayed in the corner, who couldn't do anything. She saw me for the first time. She saw a professional helper for the first time. That was very, very terrible. And she, even that, after 20 years, she was still bruised from what happened to her daughter. So at the NGO, I'm able to do a commemoration in the name of the child so that as the, fam as the family, they can, re they can feel that they have received somebody who takes them into consideration. Since the death of her child, she was never put into consideration. So victim empowerment programs should also be should also be taken into consideration for helping people who have experienced GBV. As we are listening to stories in here, it's so sad what is happening to victims as well. We must also take care of that area. And especially as women, we must go out, find out people who are bruised by crime itself. Thank you very much. That's the heart of God. Leadership, I really honor you for giving us this opportunity. I'm just going to come with the input on everything that people are saying. Uh, on the 17th, ne? On the 17th of September, SABC2 will be having Father's Meta Film. Please, every church, watch SABC2, half past eight. We, it's part of a hotline that is going to help a lot of pastors and a lot of families. Kiddy Film is a sixty. They will be coming every week. So please watch that. I'm part of the activists that are really, really promoting fatherhood. Not Fatherhood is not only based on men, but it's based on us as a family. The role of the fathers and the healing of the community. One other thing is that I am a, a pastor, but also I am a chaplain. Community chaplain and medical chaplain where we go and deal with issues of, you know, palliative care and all that. So what we are saying is that let the church or the, 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 the pastors be the chaplains of their community. It mustn't be You are called to a community, irrespective of what you are doing. That's what we are doing. And then if you want more information about that, then you can contact me. 
one of the other programs that I'm involved in is transformation center training, where we are saying, as a church, become a missionary of your own area. You are a mission. What is happening within your, your, your community need to be reported to you. Gone are those days where are the church is a museum of two hours a Sunday. The Bible says, when people are sick, let them seek for uh, 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 elders and let them pray for them. But you find that the community, when they are crying, the church is closed. So we need to be repositioned. So if you want elders, we are training that. It is free. We come in your area. You call more than 20 pastors. It will equip you. It's a five-year program, but we do it one time in six months. And then you go and we are monitoring you. You are developing. For if a community like this, let the church step in. Because most of the pastors, they don't have the skills. So we are coming, we are saying, here we are, let's work with you. And transform even the, the people that are fighting for pulpit how, And turn them to be workers in the kingdom. So that they know their neighbors what is happening. So if anybody wants that information, which it is what I, I, I'm here for, to just say there are programs that we have started. I, I know that there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of things, but this is the, the, the programs that we are having. And then uh, my number, if you don't mind, a, a chair, that I can give my number. Can I? Y yes, Mama. 072-174-7400. Pastor Sophie from Strong Tower Ministries. I believe that after COVID, God has broken the walls of the church. We need to go to the communities now. Because the community cannot come and knock at your door. So we are going out there and doing that. Let's hold each other's hand. Whether any area, call me, we come, we organize a three-day training. The first one, we do, do that. It's free. We are just going to pay for the job because of our and in our venue. But we are doing it for free, and then we're equipping the church for the, the missionaries. Be it gender be it violent, be it a, a greenhouses, be it child, child molestation, drug abuse. You will be able to be a, a equipped for how do I handle it as a church. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Greetings to all the servants of the Lord in this place. Uh, my name is Apostle Konim Khatebe from the Val. I just want to make some few comments on what everybody has said, especially uh, Mehops. The Bible in the book of Psalm 68, verse 11 says, The Lord gives the command and a great army of women spread the good news. The kings of the foreign armies are quick to run away, and the women who stayed at home divide the plunder. This uh, scripture came to mind when uh, Apostle Hobbes was talking about uh, their evangelical mission in Hillbrook, when the women were out there proclaiming the word. And the women became a strong army. That's all that we need. Uh, the Bible tells us about women who were running, who were crying after Christ. And Christ said, go and cry for you and your children. And some of our women are still stuck there. But when Christ went through the grave, when he arose, a woman was there. And that woman went and proclaimed the word. Where are those women today? We've got women who are still crying for themselves and their children. By pizza di mbogot. Mbogoto kilijwe, hawi raya wale mala. Bonte ate, kona we are not mbogotos. Because we feel pain. So now I'm not going to say I'm mbogoto because hawi raya lijwe, uluena wale mala. Litat. But Rona, we've got feelings, we feel pain. So we need those women who are a strong army, who will proclaim the word, who will go out there and said, not on my watch. I will not watch my sister get abused. Let's have that strong army. It says foreign kings, they ran away, and the women who stayed behind, they divided the plunder. These foreigners, the Zamazamas, they need us as women. 
And the blunder is our children that they've put into nyaupe, that they've put into drugs. We will be able to save our children if we become that strong army. Women, let us rise. There is no time. Jeso wat. Oshoka bome. Ba protli manguri jeso utsuile. Isim bome ba lelambona libana babon. Thank you. It was the, the last speaker. Am I correct? Yes. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, this was a very emotional session, and uh, we have noted all the inputs made by the various formations. And I think as a way forward, the, the committee will, will consolidate the input and we'll have a further conversation with the department, especially on the commitments made by the department to follow up just to check what programs they will put in place just to, you know, to reach out to you. But to note that um, most of the inputs, I think you, you made a, a reflection about yourselves as the FBO. And I'm glad that most of the inputs were action oriented. You were not blaming government for this and that. The, the conversation was different because it talked to you and what you can do in your corner, in your little space. And I like the fact that you have, uh, you know, resolved that you, you need to be organized. You need to be focused. Just this morning, we had an oversight visit. We, we, we visited a, a center around here where they uh, take care of uh, mentally challenged people. It's a very well-run center. It's, a, it's, a, it's an NPO. You can see that it's run by professional people who've got the passion and who understands what they are about. They work together. They are running a very successful center. So it's not impossible for us to collaborate and come up with such centers in the areas where we live. It's, it's doable. We just have to apply our minds, sit together, share our thoughts like one of you raised to say, let's, let's bring all these brilliant ideas together. Don't look at working for yourself in silos. So let, let's, let's do it in that spirit. And then um, I think uh, it is important that as the FBO, you should be able to assist us, the, uh, the committee as well as government, to make sure that the, the issues that need your intervention are actually brought forward into the fore. Then you can get the support of government because it must come from you as well. So um, I think a pastor has said, Hore, let's wake up and smell the coffee. And complain. Let's do something. Let's be action oriented. Let's be activists in our own space. So I would like to, 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 to end it on that note and request member Engelbrecht to deliver the vote of thanks. And maybe just to indicate that I had a request from the male pastors to say that they would like to have a session similar to this. Thank you very much, pastors, for reaching out. I have received the, the message. We will sit down and we will consider that. We do have a term program that we work on. So we'll see how we can slot a, your activity and we'll communicate with yourselves so that we can have a similar session with the male pastors and hear the perspectives from the male pastors and apostles. So over to you, uh, Honorable Member. Chairperson, thank you very much. I think today is a historic moment. The fact that this portfolio has come together with faith-based organization like yourself. And I see before me a group of women and men that are hurting inside. And all of us were very emotional today hearing the stories that affect each one of us. I've got four sons, and then I think to myself that these four men have to go forward and they have to treat women with the respect that is needed, that women deserve. And all of us have men and boys out there that need to treat women with the respect that they need. And what has happened that society has disintegrated 
into this situation that we have men destroying women, killing women, and raping women. What has happened that we are sitting with this society? So gender-based violence is not a woman's problem. It's a man problem. So women and men have failed their children. So for me, having four sons who are going to marry women and they're going to have their own children, it's very sensitive for me. And therefore, I thank you, Chairperson, for what you've done today. And I thank all of you for being here today. Let's go out together. And I see before all of I see before me the strong group of women, strong group of men. Let's go out there. Let's be the missionary of our communities. Let's go out there, be the healing part of our community. Let's really go out there and show, be stronger, stand strong. Be the strong people of our community and start like a small little stone that goes into a river. Be bigger, be stronger, and make the circle stronger and go out there and be the people, be the voice, and be the healing part of our community. I thank every one of you. Be safe, be strong, and be the voice of healing. I thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Member Engelbrach for the kind words and delivering the vote of thanks on behalf of the portfolio committee. Um, I know when we started, we, 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 we opened with the national anthem, which equates to a prayer. And I would want us, uh, Apostle, to now close the session with a, a prayer. And my apologies to... Uh, to yourselves for having overlooked the opening prayer, but I, I, I thought uh, the, the, the national anthem equated the, 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 the prayer, the opening prayer. But I will now call upon uh, Honorable Bishop Ethel Togozile Sangweni, who was supposed to do the opening prayer, to come and do the closing prayer for us and extend my apology to Pastor Lebohang Ransadi, who was supposed to do the closing prayer. My apologies, Pastor. So over to you, uh, Pastor. Uh, Bishop Ethel, yes.
Alleluia. Sbongi le tuala le tu. Sbongi le moyo ingwele. Sbongi le mbanagatiko. Ube nati ingena le session moyo ingwele. Si abonga na manju hambe nati ndela yonke. Kulunkulo na manja wonke. Si akulega guwe entambama. Ugutin kulunkulo na manja besu polisa ama ngeba. Kulunkulo na manja. Ate ukvulega glendao. Moyo ingwele. Sikuwe tembile nge ikati zonke. Ugutuwe na baba uya sinagegela. Sikuwe tembile baba ngoba wenu ya standa. Wena baba utalunati nge ikati zonke. Uya sbuga lapo sinyatela. Nkulunkulo na manja wonke. Uta uufu munya ule tulusherele. Na manje baba siya bonga. Sile tutumolonke guwe. Sita geko fana nawe. Ageko linga niswa nawe. Moyo ingwele siya bonga. Wisita ndo setu. Babo na manja wonke. Tatutumolonke lukufanele. Sisa zo puma samba siye makaya. Inle la nge inle la ibanati. Nkulunkulo na manja. Sibo payonki mi moye mibi. Em kwa kreni. Lapo si hamba kona. Nkulunkulo sitaina sabelo. Kulunkulo na manja wonke, tala nati nge ikati zonke. Sibonge nkulunkulo etu, sibonge kwa holi betu. Aba ishelile le nkonzi hana mtanje. Moyo ingwele ibanabo nge ikati zonke. Uba apu kishaka nipo ngdulu konda gonke. Baba siya bonge kameni nga chesu wa se nazareta. Siya bonge nkulunkulo na manje kameni nga chesu wa se nazareta. Siya bonge nkulunkulo na manje e kameni nga chesu wa se nazareta. Moyo ingwele tatutumo giti sonke na munye na munye siya bonga manje kuze kwe parate ime. Sibongile pastors, you are all invited for lunch and maybe just I made an omission a pastor hopes to say that we will try to organize a feedback session on the events that transpired today. We will arrange with the committee, we'll see how we factor it in, whether we combine it with the session with the men, but we'll organize it and we'll communicate with you and you can communicate with the pastors. So thank you very much, enjoy your lunch and have a safe trip back home.